Hello there, dear friends, and welcome to a lovely day in my polytunnel. Last days of October 2019, and it actually feels like forever since I was out here doing a live video for you. But uh, I, I simply must have forgotten about that. So today I will grab my my phone and uh, go out to check my warm composts. I have done a video recently, uh, just recorded it for my members at the Swedish website. Um, and by the way, by uh, New Year in January, we will do a membership content also at sarabakmo.com for you guys watching uh, the English blog. I hope you will looking forward to that. Well, um, I am preparing my polytunnel right now for winter gardening by planting and make new sowings. Um, if you are new to this channel, I am Sarah and I uh, am gardening in Sweden. Hello, Susan and Turid. <laughs> nice to have you here. Uh, so I garden in Sweden and uh, this is quite a critical um, time of uh, year uh, for, for us gardening in, in Sweden because we have um, not only quite cold winters we also have dark winters so it's not possible like to grow plenty of vegetables unless you have a very good plan but uh, you will get to read about that plan on my blog at sarabakman.com or sarabakman.se depending on what kind of language you speak right so um you see the boxes over here um two warm composts that I made, I think it was uh, just in the beginning of uh, summer. Uh, I made them and I have um, I kept them in my other polytunnel uh, in another part of the garden. And to be honest with you, I simply forgot them <laughs> because I was very busy uh, in, in summertime. So, um, so, so I simply forgot them. But the good thing was that uh, everything worked quite fine um, as I expected uh, in the in the compost boxes and uh, a couple of weeks ago I simply got them and uh, carry them in here because this is a place where I I go several times each day um, just to check my vegetables and as you can see that's um, pretty much green in some places in a few weeks time I hope it will be filled up even more so it's if you want to care for something it's good to have uh, the projects close or at least in a place where you often go visiting it's very very windy today I am always a bit oh, like this when it's windy because um, I'm afraid that my house will simply blow away uh, the house got damaged uh, in 2015 in fall in a very strong storm uh, so I had to order some new plastic the, the cover but uh, this one uh, has been standing very very good. I will turn the camera now and just show you uh, a bit about the warm composts because I think it's, it's so exciting to follow I mean what worms can do really. So hang on. It doesn't look that complicated, right? Uh, it's this, I think you call it styroboard and on top and then it's, uh, a plastic one just underneath. I simply do not remember which one I filled with Bokashi and which one I filled with like fresh compost, but we will have to check that out. Um, the most exciting thing is when you lift this cardboard. I keep it on top just to make sure that um, um, all the materials inside the, the warm compost is like moist so it don't like dry out. And the best part <laughs> is when you lift this cardboard and see what's underneath and you have to be quite quick doing this because uh, the worms are very very quick so they move fast hi Mia <laughs> nice to, 
to see you watching right so i simply remove this and you keep an eye on the small red worms inside of the box there's a, um, one layer of cardboards it's, it's very like damp and um, a layer of newspapers as well oh no can't see them <laughs> i do see some other things i lifted uh, the sort of the the cardboards a few minutes ago and i guess that they ran away here are things i definitely don't want to see do you see what this is this is eggs from some kind of slug and i will simply press as many of them as possible just to destroy them i don't like doing this <laughs> blah but this is uh, a compost with fresh compost uh, it's not bokashi and on top of this you see a lot of it looks like small sausages <laughs> almost and this is warm poo the number two from from the worms they may not have only one So this is things they have eaten, and here's a worm. My, you see how quickly they move? My three-year-old boy, he says, this is our garden friends, our garden buddies. The worms, and we also have another friend. I don't know what, what it is in English. It's a gråsug in Swedish. But if I simply... Mams, mams, oi. <laughs> it's uh, kind of warm in here. I think um, I had a thermometer uh, laying here before and it showed me like 20 degrees. So it's perfect. Oh, you see, oh, they are, s look. This is a very good thing because you see there are not only the, the the thick worms you see worms in all kind of sizes very very tiny worms white worms <laughs> and this is the best thing you can get in a worm compost if you go out in your own garden and check underneath a layer of mulch, for example, this is what you should look for. Uh, worms in different sizes. Um, because what, what does it mean? It means that they um, re reproduce itself. They lay eggs. And in a couple of weeks, they could actually be a lot more worms than they were before. So if they like it, they will produce lots of baby worms and it's amazing. Yeah, in Norway you say mak, I know that. <laughs> Musk in Swedish, mak in Norwegian and worms in English. So I have simply filled, uh, filled this uh, box with um, fresh uh, fruit and uh, greens from uh, our local grocery store. So what I do is uh, twice a week, I go to the store and I collect all their like vegetable, the scrap that they are going to throw away. So instead of throwing it away, I, I keep it and I make uh, composts um, from that. Now I will put back the top layer of cardboard and I will remove this box. Then we'll have a look in the box underneath. And in that box, I have um, put a lot of Bokashi compost. So I will just 
leave the camera here. So nice to see the worms in a place where they really like it. Oops! Oops! That was the biggest. This one was like half a meter. My good! I got really surprised about this. It was so huge. You get to live in here. Oops! All right, are you ready for the next box? Oh my goodness, you're watching from Germany and Australia and Norway. It's fantastic. This box, uh, the top layer, it's uh, 20 degrees warm. It's uh, in, in the polytunnel right now, it's uh, like 70, 17. And this is Celsius, of course. And here are some um, mould. All right, I haven't checked this box, so we have to be prepared. Oh, it's very exciting. Are you ready? One, two, three, whoops. And UK watching too. This one is uh, Bukashin. This was the... These small animals I was talking about, gråsugga in Swedish. What do you call them in English? I, I, I have been told when I was a kid I loved those creatures. Um, never lost four words, I will tell you in just a minute. <laughs> I was told when I was a kid that these um, small animals, insects or whatever, uh, they look pretty much s s slaters, slaters, slaters. Um, they look pretty much the same since they have done in like <laughs> ages <laughs> and um, well like forever so they they didn't change mm -hmm. and it's the same in this box you see the small warm poo and actually I mean this is a huge industry to produce warm poo and sell in like garden stores I know that it's pretty big business in like other countries. It's starting to uh, to be very popular in Sweden too. And this is said to be basically the best um, manure that you can ever get. Castings, right? Um, that well, that you can feed your garden with, and it's actually for free, so you don't have to buy it. You just have to. Um, make it possible for the worms to, to work in your garden. I can tell you brilliant facts later on about... Oh, check this out. I don't know if you see it, but when I left this material, there are the, the whole area is like moving small, small, small insects. And I know that some people think that, oh, check it out, check it out, check it out. Some people think this is like disgusting. Whoa, they say. And this is, to me, this is the most perfect thing you can ever get. I mean, this is amazing. This is what it's all about. To create a possibility so that all kind of like soil helpers could produce new soil helpers from our like garbage. I love it. Did you know that one worm can produce uh, half a gram warm poo, warm compost, in just 24 hours? And this is why you should care for them extra. Because in, um, in my main garden, but also here in the polytunnel, 
I use the mulching technique um, to sort of make it easier for me to, to garden. Um, with a layer of mulch on top of the, um, of the garden beds, I don't have to weed as much as uh, I do uh, without the mulch. And I never fertilize my garden by like digging uh, in springtime or digging in, in fall time. Uh, so what I do instead is that I simply put a lot of compost. I mean, it's not compost like soil. It's a compost like um, um, old plant materials, uh, leaves and stalks and whatever, on leaves now when it's uh, fall time. I put it on top of the soil and by doing that I sort of call for the worms. It's a huge tractor coming. Um, and they sort of crawl to this place because it is like a huge restaurant for worms. And there are studies showing that I put the, this layer on top back. Studies showing that in soil, uh, in bare soil, there are between 10 and 100 um, worms in each square meter, right? But if you mulch the, um, uh, the soil, there will be about, about 500 to 1000 worms. And that is interesting because each one and, uh, of the worms will then poo half a gram of warm compost directly into the soil. By having like a huge compost heap in a part of the garden and then transport your plant material that you want to get rid of, first to the compost um, where it will decompose and um, be uh, like new soil, and then transport the new soil back to the uh, to the garden you will not have all the like good things that uh, the process when worms actually turn the compost to new soil you will lose that so if they do this process directly on top of the soil you will have so much like benefit from this process it will actually help the soil to be more healthy um, I have a blog post about this uh, where I made a, a quite uh, expensive uh, analysis um, from the soil. What are they doing? Uh, studying just the, the mulching technique and what it does to the soil. And I learned so many good things about this. Well, it's maybe it was just going to get something, I don't know. Um, before I show you exactly how I did the warm compost, I will just show oh, It's not bothering you, it's only me getting a, a bit disturbed. Uh, so this is uh, a bed that I use for um, tomatoes in this uh, year. And I mulched it very carefully with the plant parts and also with um, uh, grass clippings and it all decomposed very very good on top of the soil on the surface and now when i made new sowings before winter i simply put all the uh, the mulch in um, what you call it in you see i put it in here whoops in strings hi beata from poland <laughs> um, and i thought i could just show you how it looks like underneath now worms all over the place. <laughs> I, I just moved this uh, container, this pot, and guess what? There's lots of worms underneath. Lots of warm compost. I never keep my uh, pots on like uh, plates or what you call it. Um, I simply water and um, what the soil doesn't want to keep, it will turn back to the soil underneath and uh, it will be water for my trees and the berry bushes etc. But here I have lots of plant materials and old grass clippings and no weeds here. And it's the same here. You don't see it. It's not much, uh, not, not many worms, but a lot of small insects. And now I will show you how the soil is. 
You see, I could just grab the soil, look. And this is how it gets with the mulch, creating lots and lots of new soil directly into the into the garden beds here. It's awesome. Check it out. You can't buy this kind of soil. I think it's amazing. But uh, now when it's uh, when I prepare for winter Lots of slugs in here. When I prepare for winter, um, I remove the mulch in some places to be able to make new sowings in an easy way and also to, uh, to plant uh, a few things very like tight. That's um, the corn salad and also the beet leaves. But I had a few questions about the warm composts. Um, so what I did now in uh, a couple of weeks ago, I think it's like two weeks ago, I filled up the boxes again with uh, some old mulch from my garden beds. And the, the mulch contains a lot of like new worms because they th really thrive in here in the polytunnel. Uh, and I also mixed that material with the Bokashi compost in one box and in another box I had like the fresh uh, vegetables and uh, I covered it with a layer of mulch. And yes, uh, you asked me about um, the, the bottom, if I have like drainage holes in the bottom, I will try to show you. So you see in each corner, there's holes. Oops, sorry, I just <laughs> fell. And this one has got more holes, I guess. This is simply like a net in the bottom. So I, I also water the boxes. Um, I don't want it to be like too dry in here. Um, it will get moist simply by the worms and the insects eating from the, the vegetables and the vegetables are quite moist too. Um, but um, I did water when I I filled up the boxes. So what I am going to do now, it's very warm <laughs> on top. So what I'm going to do now is simply to, um, to leave them here for maybe another two weeks and then uh, put in some new compost for them. Um, I also um, intend to make sure that uh, it, it's not getting like too cold around them. So I am thinking about putting up some kind of styroboard foam uh, just around this or a, a blanket or something um, it's it's quite warm in Sweden right now um, we, we are expecting like zero degrees um, the night before Wednesday I think but still no snow or anything so it's it's very mild and before it's getting too cold um, I don't have to do really anything because the worms will keep their activity for a long time. It's uh, one thing I do know uh, that I will do is that when it's getting cold, I, I try to place my warm compost directly on, uh, on the soil because that will make it easier for the worms to simply move down. Well, to, to simply move down into the soil underneath if it's getting too cold so then they don't have to bother <laughs> you know running um, running away in another direction because they could just move in into the soil and then return of course when I want to well 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 my dear friends I just wanted to share some worms with you today 
Now I am going to go out um, in my garden to harvest some parsley. The rest of the family is uh, in town buying winter shoes for the children. We are going on, um, well the children are free from school next, um, uh, next week. Uh, a fall vacation for all kids in, in Sweden. Uh, so we are going to the archipelago outside Gothenburg where I am born. And um, going for a, a hike <laughs> um, on, the, on the cliffs. Uh, on the island where I'm born. It's going to be so nice, but before that I have to do some preparations uh, in the garden. I also, I harvested lots of root uh, celeriac um, the other day and I have to bring it here into the polytunnel in case of this uh, very cold night. You never know, it might be like five degrees uh, below zero. Uh, but you, you can't always trust the weather reports. It was nice to share a few moments with you and uh, I promise you I will soon be back. I will not forget to do the live videos. I have actually a great idea for sort of a Christmas calendar uh, that I will do here on YouTube along with you and I'm so much looking forward to it. Uh, it's a really nice project. Um, well, I will not tell you more about it now but hope you are having a, a lovely Sunday and I'll see you in a short while. Bye bye all of you!